Okay, so here with The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, written in omniscient point of view, a third person omniscient. We're not going to read every little bit of it here, but just kind of touch on various points. Um, what's interesting here is that we kind of follow the thoughts of a shark, and um, that's more apparent in the third paragraph down where it says he sometimes he lost the scent but he would pick it up again or just half a trace of it and he swam fast and hard on the course um the shark we, we follow it as it kind of comes after uh the skiff where the old man is and and his attention's been drawn by the blood from a fish that the old man uh killed in and has in the boat with him um, what's interesting to me here is that the shark is actually described in ways that kind of tie it to humans. Um, we see in that same paragraph the word beautiful. Um, he was beautiful except his jaws. Um, he's described as handsome. Uh, his belly was silver with his hide and his hide was smooth and handsome. Uh, these are words that we tend to use to describe people, but then also further down in that same paragraph, we've got uh, that his teeth were shaped like a man's fingers when they're crisped like claws. Uh, so kind of interesting there that that a more objective narrator who can tell us what the fish is thinking about and also what the man is thinking about. So it does then jump back into the thoughts of the man and um, I would say that the book is primarily concerned with what's going on with the old man. He's the main character. But anyway, um, he he says his head was clear and good and he's full of resolution and he knows what he's going to do with this shark. Um, something I think is kind of funny towards the end at the bottom of the page there is that it says, I cannot keep him from hitting me, but maybe I can get him. Dentuso, he thought, bad luck to your mother. So he's kind of like cursing the shark's mother, which almost again serves to make that shark a little human-ish. Like the fact that you would do that is something like you would do to an enemy who is a person. So um the fact that I am allowed to follow the thoughts of the shark and then also follow the thoughts of the man in this omniscient perspective seems to highlight to me and suggest to me the interconnectedness of nature, man's and humankind's place in the larger world, especially here out at sea. And I almost have a respect for the shark that I don't know that I would have if I couldn't follow the shark's thoughts. Um, he's not like a Jaws, you know, like the scary movie Jaws kind of shark that just comes out of anywhere. Um, the second paragraph tells us the shark was not an accident. Um, he's been following this boat and he's just doing what a shark does. And the man is just doing what a man does. And so I can see Hemingway playing with these ideas, these motifs of man and nature, humankind and nature, and Again, the interconnectedness, and I can see where maybe he's working towards a theme about those ideas. So, um, yeah, I think that's why I chose omniscient perspective there.